Last video, we looked at the conditions necessary for a collision between two molecules to cause a reaction. We're now going to zoom out from our view of individual molecules and consider the energies involved in a reaction from a more macro scale. To do this, we need to revisit the energy diagrams that you learned about in Unit 1. Okay, so we know that for a reaction to occur, the reactant molecules have to collide in the right orientation and with sufficient energy to break bonds. So let's explore the idea of sufficient energy more closely. We need a little revision on the energy changes that occur during a reaction. So we're gonna draw an energy diagram. The vertical axis here is energy. The horizontal axis represents the progress of the reaction or time, if you like. If we draw the enthalpy of the reactants here, remember that we're representing the amount of chemical energy stored in the bonds of the reactant molecules. And the enthalpy of the products shows the energy stored in the bonds of the product molecules. So remember this, we can draw a curve that represents how the energy changes through the reaction. We start with this much chemical energy, and then we add some energy in order to get the reaction started. And then the reaction emits some energy, and we end up with our products. Now there are two important quantities here. Delta H, the change in enthalpy, is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. If delta H is negative, it means that energy is emitted, as in this reaction here, and we call the reaction exothermic. If delta H is positive, the reaction is endothermic. However, the quantity that's directly relevant to rates of reaction is not the enthalpy, but the amount of energy we had to put in over and above the energy of the reactants before the reaction got started. And this is called the activation energy. So what determines the activation energy of a reaction? In order to turn reactants into products, the bonds holding the reactant molecules together have to be broken so that the atoms can be rearranged to form the product molecules. The new molecules can't be formed until the old molecules break up. So the thing that determines the activation energy is how strong are the bonds in the reactants. A reaction in which strong bonds have to be broken will have a large activation energy. Quite a lot of extra energy will be needed to break those reactant bonds and get things going. Without some kind of helping hand to provide this energy, like an added flame for instance, then the rate of this reaction is going to be slow. Conversely, reactants with weak bonds which fall apart easily may undergo a reaction with a small activation energy. And because the bonds that need to be broken are quite weak, the rate of the reaction will be higher because it's more likely that the bonds will get broken and the reaction can proceed more quickly. So the activation energy is a way of determining how much energy is needed for a collision to be successful. Say two molecules collide but the energy of the collision is less than the activation energy. Then the molecules will simply bounce off each other and continue on unchanged. However, if the collision is more energetic than the activation energy, then the bonds of the reactant molecule will break and the atoms will be free to rearrange to form the product molecule. Okay, here's your task for this video. Uh, grab yourself some graph paper and see how you go with these questions.